Welcome, little human. Are you enjoying your stay here? Rather adventurous experience, is it not? Really turns your whole world upside down. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. You must still feel awfully dizzy after dangling here for such a long time. Save your breath for now, dearie. I'm afraid you'll be staying like this for a little while longer. Let's be honest. It was foolish of you to overlook my trap in the first place. It's made to catch animals, you see. Creatures with not so much thought behind their eyes. And yet it was you who triggered it. A human. <laughs> Don't you people deem yourselves a top of the chain? I must say, though, this rather suits you. The snare wrapped so tightly around your ankle. Your arms hanging down, fingertips barely grazing the ground below. Really brings out that pathetic aura that humans seem to carry with them wherever they go. Even into my territory. Though I must applaud you. This is a first. You're the only person in centuries who's wandered so deeply into this forest. I'm surprised you haven't been taken care of by the wildlife around here. Surely you must have spent at least a couple nights out here to get this far away from home. You're a lucky one, it seems. The creatures out here are very hungry. If one of them smelled you, oh, what it wouldn't do to sink its teeth into you. Believe me, dear, you smell delicious. Fortunately for you, it was me who noticed your scent first. In fact, I sensed your presence for quite a while. I thought my mind was playing tricks on me, though. Again, it has been a long time since a human set foot out here. I didn't think it'd be possible. But this only goes to show I should trust my instincts after all. Your scent may have been obscured by the wind, but it could not hide your scream. You may be asking yourself, if I knew you'd fallen victim to my trap, why didn't I come to you sooner? Well, you see, dearie, I first had to decide what I was going to do with you. As much as I would love to watch you hanging there all night long, I have to at least find some use for you. <laughs> it's not proper etiquette to waste food now, is it? So, I think I'll take you with me for now. I'll determine your fate some other time. Who knows? Maybe you'll make for a nice decoration. You sure are quite the looker. Now, enough idle chatter. I can tell the blood rushing to your pretty little head is starting to take a toll on you. Hold still, dearie. I'll take care of this for you. Well, what is it, dearie? What's with the face? Did you expect me to just let you drop onto the floor? Or are you just now realizing the true nature of what I am? <laughs> How sweet. And how predictable. In all my years, I haven't met many who weren't afraid of me. And you're no exception. Do not try to struggle. You wouldn't get very far. Trust me. Besides, I'm not in the mood for a chase. Here's what's going to happen. I will carry you back to my humble little abode. And you will behave. Remember... I haven't yet decided what I'm going to do with you. And now that you realize you're dealing with a full-grown vampire, you might want to consider doing what's best for your neck. <laughs> Find your words again, dearie, did you? Tell me, do you think it's smart to insult me? So far, I've been nothing but hospitable to you. So what are you calling me a monster for? Stop fucking whining. You either come with me or I'll leave you out here for the wolves to find. Trust me, they'll have a feast. With all this ruckus you've been causing, they're just waiting for their chance to jump at you. A wise decision. I trust you'll be a good little human while you're in my arms. Otherwise, I'll have to take advantage of how close your bare skin is to my fangs right now. <laughs> Understood. 
Let's get going then. It isn't very far. Though, I'll make one thing very clear, Terry. <laughs> this isn't a gesture of kindness. I'm not carrying you to be your knight in shining armor while your head is still spinning. I simply cannot be bothered to reset any more traps that you might trigger if I just let you walk. I've got quite a few around here. And besides, I imagine your ankle must hurt after being suspended by it for such a long time. I doubt you'd want to lose the other to a bear trap. And again, maybe you wouldn't mind. After all, surely you must have known venturing into this forest was a one-way trip. So, if you don't mind losing your life, what's a single leg to you? This makes me wonder, why are you here? What could possibly have made a human desperate enough to wander this steeply into the home of so many vile creatures? I'm guessing your life hasn't been an easy one. Or maybe word got out about a handsome man living deep inside the woods and you just had to go see for yourself. <laughs> but I doubt your people are even aware of my existence anymore. Many generations ago, I was feared. Entire town slept with one eye open after word had gotten around that Augustine had made their town his hunting grounds. I oh, was surprised to hear my name, dearie. It's not like a monster to bear the name of a human, is it? It was given to me by my mother. I was just like you once, of course. A human. <laughs> no, I do not intend to bore you with the details of my past. I see what you're trying to do, dearie. And it's not going to work on me. You think you can gain my favor by listening to my stories and keeping me company? That I must be oh so lonely and desperate for someone to talk to. You must have read too many books. Trust me, many have tried to trick me in the same manner. And I will not fall for it again. You're fortunate, I won't end you for even trying to deceive me in such a pathetic way. Enough of this. We're here. Welcome to my home, dearie. I'll let you down, but don't get too comfortable yet. There's one last thing I need to do before we head inside. You see, I can't stay and watch over you all night long. And while I trust the walls and locked doors will keep you inside, I might want some added insurance. A bit of spilled blood should do nicely. The scent will draw every vicious beast around here towards us. They won't do me harm, of course. If you should escape, however, you are sure to die as soon as you open the door. So, if you don't mind, dearie, why don't you show me your pretty little neck? Come on now. Don't make me ask twice. There we go. That's more like it. I'm not sure whether you really smell as divine as it seems or whether my mind is playing tricks on me. It's been quite a while since I've been this close to a human. The blood of animals may satiate me, but it's not nearly as enjoyable as the blood of a living, breathing human. The adrenaline, the emotions. It's just so much those creatures lack. I didn't realize how badly I was craving human blood. But the way it pulses through your veins... Smooth skin, the sound of your heart beating so fast. And no woodland beast could ever beat the expression of pure terror on your cute little face. I'm shaking with excitement almost as much as you are with fear. Even though I enjoy taking in your fright, I don't think I can save her at this time around. I need to taste you. Try to be good for me, little human. <sighs> Would you look at that? Seems our little human has finally decided to join the world of the living again. Did you find your strength again, dearie? It must have been quite an eventful night for you, after all. 
Tell me, does your leg still feel sore? Surely it must hurt. Or perhaps you're more concerned with your neck. <laughs> A bit of bruising is always to be expected. Besides the puncture marks, of course. I recommend you get used to that feeling. Though, humans never had a reputation for particularly high pain tolerance. Perhaps I ought to be a bit more considerate of how fragile your kind's bodies are. <laughs> and your minds, on top of that. I wouldn't be surprised if you felt a bit disoriented, considering you've been unconscious for quite a while. Oh, please. There's no need to be scared. I don't bite without reason. I wouldn't say no to another sip of your blood, of course, but it would be no fun to overdo it when we've just started. <laughs> I'd rather save some of the anticipation, the excitement. And don't you agree there's a certain magic in having to wait? It makes the experience so much more enjoyable. Imagine a child on Christmas Eve who simply cannot wait to finally open his presents. All the wrapping paper, colorful bows, the warm lights. As tempting as it might be to tear the paper off right then and there, it's much more rewarding to wait for the right time. And much the same is true of me right now. Except unlike some children, I'd hate to break my new toy so soon. After all, I consider you to be a rare gem, dearie. Not only did you find your way into my territory, into my trap for me, you also taste heavenly. The delicate flavors complement each other so perfectly, like an expensive wine. I'd consider it a sin to waste even a drop of your blood, let alone your life. Trust me, you have no idea how delicious you taste to me after I've had to feed on animals for such a long time. Must have been close to you. A hundred years since I last had a mouthful of blood as rich and flavorful as your own. <sighs> Most likely you think I'm some ruthless monster who lusts for death and destruction. Surely you must question why I don't just give up on these woods altogether and go hunting somewhere I can hope to come across humans to feed on. The immortals are pragmatic like that, quick to act, quick to judge. But often, you fail to see the broader picture. I certainly don't seek your approval, little human. But if I expect you to behave and comply with my rules, I'd, I'd at least like to make an attempt to show my perspective. Why I live the way I do. I've been isolated here for such a long amount of time, I have no knowledge about the state of the world out there. As much as I would like to believe that peace has finally been established between vampires and humans, your reaction upon realizing what I am tells me all I need to know. I've been on both sides of the war. I know of the injustice and cruelty out there. Believe me, dear, it is not just vampires who can commit horrific acts. I've denied you my life story before, when it was clear that you were merely trying to manipulate me. But there is a time and a place for reminiscing, and I believe it'll help you to understand that I am no monster. Perhaps it'll ease your nerves a bit to know about your captor make you less prone to rash decisions and disobedience. If I'm not mistaken, I mentioned my mother to you before, have I not? It was just me and her back then, when I was still human, I mean. An innocent child. We lived in a small house near the edge of the village, close by a little stream. We didn't own much, but we were a family, and the rich garden my mother tended to on the daily always put enough food on our plates. And I spent my days climbing trees, chasing small animals. <laughs> it was the only time in my life I've ever felt truly content. Even now, as I've lived for so many years, the carnal pleasure of drinking someone's warm, velvety blood doesn't come anywhere close to the joy I felt simply smelling the flowers or tasting the first sweet fruits of the season. My mother was a wise woman. She always knew just what to do. The townsfolk respected her knowledge of the healing powers of all sorts of herbs. The ones who couldn't afford to call for a doctor often just came to us with whatever ailments were plaguing them. 
More often than not, my mother was able to help. You'd think someone as kind and generous as her would surely earn the favor and gratitude of their peers. <laughs> but you see, her wisdom came to be her downfall. And mine, by extension. A famine came around. Man and animals alike had to go hungry for weeks on end. In dire times, people tend to turn towards superstition. The town folk suspected witchcraft. And who else would the blame fall upon other than the one who possesses expertise in medicine? And they accused my mother of cursing their fields and spoiling their crops. So they killed her, dragged her out of her house onto the streets and ended her life right before my eyes. All I did was hide. Even then, as a child, I felt like a coward. I blamed myself for her death for a long time. I told myself, if I couldn't have saved her, I should at least have died that day as well. But obviously, it never came to that. For better or for worse, I haven't yet decided. With my mother gone, all that was left for me was to run. So I ran. As far as my legs would carry me, I didn't know where I was going. I just wanted to put as much distance as possible between myself and the horrors I'd seen that day. I left her body behind, the home I grew up in, and along with it all the beautiful memories that had now been tainted with her blood. I don't remember how long I must have traveled for, but eventually I came across a town. It was much bigger and more lively than the environment I was used to. Credit enough to stay anonymous and keep myself fed by stealing a watch here, a bracelet there. I didn't enjoy being a thief. My mother had taught me better than that, but it was the only way to survive. Over time, I became more comfortable, settled into my new life. The dark alleys of the city, far away from all the crowds and the noise, became my new home. For years, I was blissfully unaware of who I was sharing my home with, until it was too late. All I knew of the existence of vampires, their number and preferred hunting grounds were largely unknown back then. As I understand now, they'd been roaming the streets of that particular town for quite a while. Just like myself, they enjoyed the anonymity of the crowds, the ability to simply take what they needed and vanish. Once again, I believe I was destined to die the day I was turned. It was the vampire's carelessness that led him to spare my life. Had he taken any more of my blood, surely I would have passed away. But instead, I felt a sharp pain spreading throughout my body, starting from the bite marks on my neck. In case you're unaware, a human may only turn into a vampire if they're left with just barely enough blood to survive. When I woke up, nothing was as before. It is customary for a newly turned vampire to receive guidance from the one that's responsible for their doom. After all, it is no small task to keep a constant craving for blood under control, to not draw attention to yourself and your kin, to not let the monster you've become completely control you. However, I was never offered the privilege of being taken in by my master. Even after I approached him, begged him to teach me, he couldn't care less about what he had done to me. I'm not proud of the times that followed. I lost control over my hunger, gave in to any little craving, took the lives of so many innocent people. Bloodlust is a curious thing, dearie. Not only does it make you lose control in the moment, it's also an excellent excuse to justify your actions, to drown out any feelings of guilt that might arise when you hold yet another lifeless body in your arms. I lived like that for a long time taking lives and never looking back, leaving a trail of blood wherever I went. I was convinced I had a right to alter the lives of so many mortals simply because of the injustice I had to endure on my own. As I know now, I was gravely mistaken. Surely you must wonder what could have possibly changed me. What could have possibly convinced a bloodthirsty monster to live deep inside a forest, almost as dangerous as itself. <sighs> Even thinking about that night stirs up emotions vampires should be incapable of. 
I don't remember much of how the night began. The bloodlust drowned out any sensation but the rich, downy blood I felt on my tongue. Suddenly, the crimson red fog in my mind lifted, and I found myself locking eyes with a small boy cowering in the bushes, my fangs still buried deeply in the flesh of the man before me. The way he was shivering, the look of pure desperation in his eyes. <laughs> it brought back some of the sanity I thought I had lost forever, and for the first time in years, I realized I was tearing apart families, killing daughters, fathers, loved ones. I'd become just as cruel as the monsters who had taken my mother from me. But I knew it was too late to save the boy's father. He would not have survived to live as a human. If I had stopped drinking his blood right there and then, surely he would have turned. But at what cost? Under no circumstances would I have been a suitable mentor, as I myself was barely clinging to the last bit of humanity that was still intact within me. So, to turn this man into another vampire without a master, roaming the streets, and possibly taking his own son's life as his first meal? I had to kill him. For the first and only time, I consciously ended someone's life. I drank every last drop of his blood. All the while, I couldn't bring myself to take my eyes off that frightened little boy. And I wasn't blinded by thirst. The bloodlust hadn't clouded my judgment. My only excuse, my only way of justifying what has happened is the thought that this was the best possible outcome. I tell myself that it was for the better, for the boy's sake, the greater good. And yet, I find myself thinking about him. I wonder what had become of him, what his life was like. I'm certain he must have passed away by now, but I sincerely hope it was his old age that took him. That day I promised myself, no, I demanded of myself to abandon my ruthless ways. And I've kept my word. I lived deep inside this forest ever since. I feed on animals. I keep away from humanity. Until you came along, that is. You see, dearie, you've made me lose my composure. Unburied some dark traits I thought I had left behind long ago. But now that I've had a taste... I can't let you just leave. I can feel my cravings re-emerging from deep within. This, this curse has long buried its roots further into my soul than I thought. Until I find a way to deal with it once and for all, you'll be my way of keeping it under control, whether you like it or not. Oh dear, you're mistaken. I never said I'd refrain from hurting a human ever again. All I promised is that I wouldn't take away a beloved family member. You, however, you decided to wander into my territory. If I don't keep you here, surely you will die by the hands of a creature within these woods. You see, I'm not taking you from anyone. You were the one who's done this to yourself. Ah, oh, but there's no need to worry. You may be mine now, but I do intend on treating you with the bare minimum of dignity a sentient being deserves. Fortunately for you, that means I won't take your blood again today. I'll return shortly. I do believe I hear something struggling in one of my traps. Let's hope it's not one of your friends, dearie. <laughs>